All right, what is up, guys? Been a little while. Work's been super busy. My apologies. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and get some portfolio reviews out of the way for you guys. At least get those up online. Stream should resume uh, a normal schedule soon. So we're going to start with SD Land 17. So I want to be a 3D environmental art environmental artist for games. So not yet, huh? Not yet. Let's check it out. Also, I've repositioned the mic, so it might sound a little different. Let me know how it sounds, if this is going to work or not. Yeah. Let's get to it, huh? Okay, so Samuel. Oh, yeah, I got a new light, too. We'll see how this... See it casting shadow on me? I don't know. We'll see. It gets super bright. Just, uh... Also changes warmth too. How do we turn that down? Let's see if we can do something like that. And where, there we go. Cool. Okay, so Samuel. Uh, let's see here. So you want to be a 3D environment artist? Straight off the bat, I would suggest removing your um, hand drawn stuff. Just because it uh, detracts from the direction you're trying to head towards. Uh, the next four pieces look pretty strong. So we'll look at this first one. Post-apocalyptic. Um, attention to the detail is pretty good. Thinking about like how propping is kind of set up and like how the space ages and wears. Some initial things is looking at... Um, how to, how to get away from the look of uh, being inside of a box, right? So, like, it's really easy for 3D to look like 3D, I guess. Um, things that kind of uh, cause things like that to look like boxes is these, these like, straight edges here. So being, being um, aware of those straight edges and trying to find ways to break those up is, is pretty key. Um, Think about how those are broken up in real life, too, because that, that usually answers everything. So, for example, ceilings, how flat they are, and what details you can find on a ceiling. Like, you're starting to get there with things like these vents and uh, TVs attached to the ceiling for people waiting for their laundry to process. Um, or, like, trims on the ground and how, those, how the wall meets the floor and the transition from wall to floor occurs. Uh... As well as like when you start getting aged locations like this, what what ends up happening here? And like you you tend to get like this these kind of breakup pieces that you have going on tend to build up around the edges. It's kind of like a like a skirting effect. Um, let's see what else we got here. And then the other thing that I would suggest paying very very close attention to is figuring out what uh, what the scale is in the scene. And understanding how your props portray the scale of a space. Uh, let me just play this here real quick. So you can see in this concept. So you can see the height of this uh, this door frame. And like, I know in your scene you have a pretty good uh, spacing for where the top of this window meets the meets the ceiling right here. Um, now, initially, in your oh, the frame rate, and that's really nice. Um, let me just scoot back here a bit. So you see, the the width of the scene is it's pretty narrow here. Like from the front of this this washer to the first window, uh, there's seats here, and the gap between the seats to the washer here, the spacing, like the wall back here seems much further back. Um, just looking at where things are at in order to kind of match the space that's in the concept and maintain that kind of overall scale. Um, also adding some props that could help uh, push the look. Like smaller smaller things, like where are all the little, the little things? Like um, the thing that holds the detergent and like boxes and old clothes that were left and it's just right now it's pretty empty. It's getting there though. Like the amount of propping that's happening and 
it's it's getting there. It just needs more. I like the fact that you're doing signage in here as well. Signage is really important as it helps with scale as well as uh, how a space is used, like where exit signs are, if there's a sign to the bathroom, stuff like that. Nice addition to the pipes on the walls. Um, let's see what else we got going on here. So the other thing, too, is to try and make a space feel more disheveled or abandoned in this case is taking these uh, the washers and dryers and closing some of them like you've got that one closed maybe having some patterns on the bottom here I like that the aging on each of these is slightly different and where these stickers are um, usually these are pretty uniform so maybe they'll be like in the bottom corner and they'll be in the same spot for all of them some of them may be worn more than others uh, but taking this straight line here and breaking it up by just kind of like moving them so that some are a little further out than others or like slightly rotated, just small changes so that the straight lines get wiped out. Uh, the other thing is, the other thing that's important with this scene before we move on is uh, making sure to be able to see if you can tell a story. If there's always, there's always an opportunity to tell a story and like if you can find a spot like, uh, tell a story. It's always it's always much more interesting than just a scene that's propped. Let's see, so this one is a Star Trek fan art. Overall, this one's pretty cool. Scale-wise, things are looking pretty nice. The attention to the UI and, like, all of the buttons and stuff is really cool. The clear screens are pretty awesome, and you've got these like little tube light things. Those are pretty cool. It's like single point LED cables. Ceiling detail here is really cool. I think where right now where this this scene breaks down is like where the so you have the wall pieces here. Oh, hang on, I gotta change this song. It's weirding me out. Um, so let's see here. So in the concept. Interesting. Okay. So you've nailed the concept pretty well. These uh, these back panel pieces feel like they're probably a little bit more narrow. I think those are doors, like uh, free, free sliding doors. So you can see how wide those feel. Like narrowing those down will really help with your with the overall scene. Um, the pattern on the ground is really hard. Like it doesn't... Uh, so in the concept, I know it's that same pattern, but I think... In the in the execution in 3D, those those patterns tend to look very uh, generated or 3D. So being careful, man. I really like this console stuff. This is really good. Some breakup in the roughness and kind of like detailing of the that surface would be really important, I think. Because in, in an environment like this, everything tends to be either really shiny or really like uh, diffuse, like rubbers versus plastics versus really reflective metals. And the thing that will really add to the, the overall detail is getting a lot of that information into the roughness so that you have like fingerprints and where like hands rest and like just a little bit of the aging, like where there's little crevices where uh, the roughness can shift a little bit and maybe some value shifting as well in the ambient or in the AO. Yeah, see, this looks really good. I feel like where the, um, making sure it's in the video, where the chair base meets that panel is kind of strange that those would meet up so closely. So maybe watch out for that. Some panel lines couldn't hurt in certain areas, like down here, just where the where these like support angular beams come into the ground. Like, what do we do about those straight edges to try and get get away from that? Like in this area right here, it's feeling pretty good. I like the addition of the wires and stuff up above. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to comment on was the so the pipes down below are very. Um, the way they're intersecting into the center of the room feels very uh, radial, if that makes sense. So it's just like, doo -doo 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 -doo. and giving some more logic to it was probably would probably be good. Let me see if I can. Um, let's see if I can.
portray that a little bit. But like, if I scroll up here, you can see it pretty clearly in, in the first image. So see how these are all like, you have this main support here, and then you have pipes that seem to be all coming in at like, uh, like a radial angle instead of more directional like in wings. So if we go, um, let's see here. So if this is the center, I'll just delete this. Sorry, hang on here. Oh, I see what's going on. Sorry. There you go. Okay, so let's just... What am I trying to do here? Okay, so when you let's say this is the the top floor of the deck, right? Uh, when you look at like how pipes, I'll just do this. We'll just say that that's a pipe. Oop. Don't mind that I'm in Moto either if you don't use Moto. But like, let's shrink this down and do this. So let's say that this is a pipe going towards maybe like the middle is the important part, right? It's, uh, you probably want all the piping heading that way, if that makes sense. So like even if you have like piping that goes that starts off at the side and then shifts you probably want that shift to uh still end up at the center or near it, you know what I mean? So everything is everything is heading towards the center. When you when you start doing stuff like uh like this, it feels really strange. And then you're wondering like, like where things are located at around the space that's making it like this. A few of them's not gonna hurt, but when it gets really radial, like, like when they're really close like this, then it gets really weird. Cause you're like, when you look at the, when you look at the ground from this angle, oh man, this doesn't really work. Hang on here. When you look at the ground from this angle, you're gonna wonder like, okay, obviously there's something important in that direction, even if it goes behind a wall. Um, but like, where are these going? Is there like wings? And then these, maybe these are going to the consoles behind. It, it has to feel like they're going to specific places that help make sense of the, the overall space. And like you see these ones are they're just kind of crossing at strange angles i guess is what i'm trying to say overall though i really like this scene i feel like it could probably uh use a little bit more of a um maybe a little bit more mood in the lighting so like up above behind the lights like it should get maybe a little bit darker up there but uh pretty solid scene this one i was looking at this earlier this morning during uh, my lunch time so this one's pretty cool. Um, right off the bat, I would say you did a pretty good job of uh, meeting the concept. I think you're missing the, uh, the element. See this piece that's really close to the screen. You could totally use your depth of field to uh, benefit from that kind of depth. The waterfalls in the back are really cool. And I think the, like this tree, for example, goes straight down quite drastically. Whereas like, um, in the concept, they don't tend to go down as straight as you would, you would think like this one's kind of angled. And then like, as this other branch coming down on the side of it, but like, they kind of have this like swooping, where's my hang on here. I'm 
I'm like, where's my epic pen? Let's start this up real quick here. Okay, so like this tree's primary shape goes down like this, but then there's like this secondary one and this uh, tertiary. Do you see how like it's important that they that it connects on like a on multiple points? Like that one's really weird, but somehow they're making that one work. When you see this one back here. So anyone that's going to ask, because everyone always asks every time they see this, I'm this app right here is called Epic Pen. It's really good. Um, yeah. So let's keep on going here. Overall, the scene's pretty strong. I like this one. This one's probably your one of your better ones. Like the light rays, like the particles used in the air. The breakup of the foliage on the ground is really nice, and the little micro details on these trees are really, really good. You are, in these angles, using the extra branches, like in the concept, to kind of like fan it out a little bit. Uh, where things break down for me, I think, are primarily the water. There's a... Uh, so when you see the water in motion, let me get a, the proper... Yeah, there it is. Okay, so you can see tiling, and I think maybe because uh, the normal maybe isn't panning with the same over itself with another normal map. Uh, that could be what's causing it. But yeah, you can see a pattern. So just maybe trying to uh, blend other normal maps on top of it so that they pa they cross paths and kind of intersect with each other as they pan will really break up those waves. Oh, there's little ripples in the water. Nice scene, though. Really, really cool. And then uh, it looks like you're starting to delve a little bit into Substance Designer, which is really cool. Um, albedo in here looks freaking awesome. Make sure you have enough... Um, mid-range in your in your roughness and nice job on making sure that these get a little bit of metalness uh, also be super careful with the little little bits of damage these little micro damages being in your normal map so strong you could probably leave that to your roughness in your in your uh, albedo to really portray that kind of micro damage you want to keep that in your normals for these giant these larger scratches overall though not a bad first material seven days ago too that's awesome nice i look forward to seeing more substances from you uh so looking at this portfolio i think you're you're on the right path um making sure that you find interesting composition double and triple checking your scale and uh continuing to progress your skills with materials i think is going to be those three things, composition, let's see, composition, scale, uh, and material definition. And then I think you'll be in a pretty good spot. You're, you're getting close. You're getting there. I don't think you're, I don't think you're ready yet as like, um, let me see if I can, see if I can find like a good, uh, good example here on. So I always use I always end up using Robin as an example, but uh, an entry level portfolio with a scene of this quality and another scene. I always love these two. Um, yeah, this portfolio is pretty strong. I would say this is probably the minimum that you should be shooting for at least when trying to get in the industry. Not not to say that Robin is the minimum, but uh, like, see, I, I don't even think, I don't know if he even needs these two things in here. But like these two scenes along with the prop breakdowns is really, really good. And there's a sense of scale. So scale is super important, composition and material definition. 
stick to those and you'll be in a pretty, pretty good spot. Anyways, thank you for submitting your portfolio. And hopefully this was helpful to you. All right, I'll be right back. Gonna get another portfolio ready to go.